face the holidays without fear or worry in regards to protecting your health and wellness progress and not just completely unraveling any progress you've made. The things I'm going to share with you, these are things that it, it they are, they're generic. I hate to say that. They're generic, but they're generic in the best way possible. They are applicable to no matter what your exact goals or tactics are. Hey, Cheryl again. I know. Good morning. Um, these are things that you're going to be able to use, whether you're, you know, eating three meals a day or you're eat, or you're doing some fasting. It doesn't really matter. These are things that are going to be applicable, whether you're trying to do keto or you're still doing Trim Healthy Mama. It doesn't really matter. These are things that are going to work for you and um, help you, you know, I, we don't want to just get through the holidays. Blah. We want to enjoy them and not be worried about unraveling progress, not be worried about food. Oh my goodness, I'm so tired of worrying about food. I'm over that. No more of that. Uh, I'm not fretting. I'm not worried. Um, I know I'm not going to undo all my progress. I know I'm not. But also, I don't want to lose my brain. I don't want to lose my head and just go willy-nilly and think, well, I'm just going to take three weeks and go willy-nilly and I'll make up for it later. You know, mm, the older you get, the harder that is to, to undo. We know that, right? So we do want to be mindful, but we don't need to be fearful. There's a big difference. So I'm going to share with you my five C's, five C's through um, through enjoying the holidays, not just not just surviving them, not just getting through them, not dealing with them. This is facing the holidays with fun and enjoyment, not fear. Okay. So number one. The first thing is, I want you to keep in mind that you, by by even, cons even listening to this video now, but considering these steps, you are taking control. That's the biggest thing. We so often give out control to the world, to others, and we don't even realize it sometimes. But I, I talk about this in how we give over control to our phone and our social media and and the post and the, the, the people out there talking, talking, talking and things like that. We're going to take control, control of our choices and, and how we do things. And that gives us a lot of power. Okay. Yeah. We're going to be wise and smart. We can do this. We can do this. So number one is you do have a lot of control. We've got to recognize that you have a lot of control in your day to day life. Um, sometimes things happen that are a little out of your control. Sometimes situations arise, but that's not the bulk, especially of the holidays. So we got to keep that in mind. So we're taking control. And from that, from that taking control, number two comes confidence, control. And then from that comes the confidence that, okay, I do have control. I can do this. I'm going to probably make, I'm probably going to make a mistake or two, or I'm going to make a stumble. I'm going to have a plan and it's not going to go quite right. But by having, having that confidence that you know, okay, most of the time it's going to work well. Most of the time I'm going to make the right choices because I'm taking control. That is starting from a place of, of, of power for sure. And the positive side, not the negative. So entering that holiday time and thinking, oh my goodness, we're going to stay over at Aunt Aunt Mar Margie Joe's house and she never has anything healthy to eat and I'm going to have to be there all day Thursday and whoa, oh, woe is me, what am I going to do? Uh -uh. That That's the negative side. And there is a lot, even in that situation, there is a lot you can do, which we're going to talk about. So taking control of what you can control starting from a place of power and confidence because you can control a lot more than you think you can, okay? Number three. Now, here we are, November 20th. The, the holiday season is just coming upon us. We haven't gotten fully into the swing of it. And it definitely goes through about, what, January 2nd, I guess. Um, I would take some time over the next few days to look at your calendar. You may not yet know about all the holiday parties and gatherings, but 
take a look at your calendar for the for the rest of this year and and try to get on there what uh what parties and gatherings and special things are going on and i think when you do that i want you to like literally and and figuratively take a step back and look at the lay of the land consider how many of these special meals or gatherings there actually are in relation to how many mundane, regular old Tuesday and Thursday meals there are. It's probably that many when you really take a step back. Is it more than rest, the rest of the year? Yes, of course. From, from about now-ish, certainly next week, until January 2nd, there are more opportunities um, to have to exercise a little extra control or planning. There are more opportunities to uh, maybe have an indulgence or whatever. Yes, there are more. But even so, get a lay of the land and consider looking at your calendar, what's coming up. You need to have it in your head. Okay, looks like we have Thanksgiving Day. That's going to be a special meal. Christmas Day, special meal. Company party. Okay, uh, my girlfriends are getting together at so-and-so's house. Okay, you know, you might have like five... Five to seven, I don't know, just as a guess. Five to seven special meals or outings. Out of all of those, <laughs> out of all of your meals, three meals a day, that's not that many. So get a lay of the land and consider that so that you can realize, okay, wait a minute. It's just a few. It's more than the rest of the year, but it's really not that many. And, and that's good because that can let you know, okay, I only need to really have a plan for those few and to consider, and I'm not telling you not to eat, you know, Aunt Mar Margie Jo's chocolate homemade cake that she makes every year. I am not saying that. It might be worth it, okay? But having that plan, but consider just how many and consider how many regular mundane meals and opportunities there are to make your best choices. And that would be the next one. So we've got taking control, having that confidence, considering what's really going on with the calendar and all the specialness, and then committing to making your best healthy choices, all those other meals. Like that That needs to be kind of like a non-negotiable. And I, listen, I wore this on purpose, okay? I'm not talking about perfection even then necessarily, but definitely making your very best healthy choices on all those other mundane meals on, you know, Wednesday, Wednesday morning and, you know, Monday, Monday dinner, whatever, com really committing to making very best healthy choices on all those other regular meals. That, that is going to do a lot for you health wise. It really is. It's going to help you compensate. It's going to help you compensate for having something indulgent or maybe having something that just isn't really the best quality, but it just, it, it, it is what it is. And it was a company work party and it just was what it was. Okay. Um, but having that, that's going to help you compensate. But it's also going to give you a, a reminder again that you have the power. You have the control most all of the time. And you can really uh, protect your progress. And it's not, not just that. Protecting your progress is important uh, for sure. But just feeling your best. Uh, you've seen lots of every year um, starting at about the end of October, you start seeing um, posts and memes and graphics talking about how, you know, and I don't know if I fully agree with this, but I'm just going to say it, okay? I'm just saying what we see. What we see are these posts that talk about how we don't have a cold and flu season. We have a sugar season that starts at Halloween candy and goes all the way to, <laughs> I don't know, New Year's or maybe even Valentine's Day. There is some truth to that because sugar just wreaks havoc on our gut. Our gut health, our immune system, which is housed in our gut, and our inflammation, and et cetera, et cetera. Definitely truth to that, for sure. No, no doubt. No doubt whatsoever. Um, so we do, we do have a lot more opportunities to have those kinds of things, but we still have plenty of mundane meals that we need to make our very best choices to compensate there, okay? And with that idea of compensation, 
All right, this is, so we're taking control. We're having that confidence that we can do this uh, and that we have more control than we think we do. We're considering the calendar and what's really going on big time. We're making a commitment to those healthy meals that are just the regular regular bulk of what we're eating anyway, the number of times, making a commitment to your very best choices, okay? Because you're just going to feel so much better when you do that, tremendously better. And then the last part here is that idea of compensation. How can we, how can we kind of mitigate the negative effects of um, when we may choose something? We may choose something that, you know, like I said, Aunt Margie Jo's homemade chocolate cake, and we can't wait to have a slice of it because it's good, and we have it every year, and it's special. It's okay. If, if your dietary plan can't allow you <laughs> to have something like that, that and, and enjoy that with your family, that's a special memory, and that really is delightfully good. I'm not talking about a Little Debbie cake. I'm talking about really good quality stuff. Then you need to rethink that because it, it really should. And you shouldn't feel guilty about that, but you still need to have a plan to mitigate that, especially this time of year when the opportunities are a little bit more uh, abundant to have some special things, okay? It's not just, you know, it's not just your birthday that's once a year or maybe your anniversary. There are going to be probably five, five to seven or so special things during this season. So we definitely want to have some uh, plan, plans for compensation. These are things I talked about not that long ago. You've heard me talk about them before. Um, these are things that are gonna help manage a blood glucose spike better to help you manage it better, recover from it better, um, just help you get back on track even faster. Um, and all those kinds of things. So this is this is some ways to compensate when you know. And again, I want you to really get into that idea of, of being in control and, and being able to make the choice and decide to have something that um, maybe isn't ideally pristinely healthy, but it's something special to you or your family or memories or whatever, or a special occasion, okay? So compensation, I've done this um, on occasion. This is things you can use anytime, but especially this time of year. There's five things I want you to think about doing before and after when you are um, making that choice to have Aunt Margie Jo's chocolate cake, or I don't know, maybe it's some um, homemade from scratch, really amazing, eggnog and it's not it's not my mama shelly's eggnog recipe that she posted here in the group today it's somebody else's eggnog recipe and and they did not use erythritol <laughs> or monk fruit okay so number one this do this if you can on on your way to the meal or event or maybe it's at your house before the people get there Drink that apple cider vinegar, okay, if you possibly can. That is going to really, really make a big impact on your blood glucose spike recovery, big time. So that can, I mean, you can do a shot of it. I know Coach Debbie uh, Martin does a shot. I don't, I can't speak to how that affects your teeth. I'm sorry, I can't. Maybe she just shoves it right down the gullet. I don't do that. Um, I'm, I'm just not woman enough <laughs> to do it. So I, I'm drinking my ACV in water with some stevia and ice and a straw. Okay. Um, but if you can do that, even, even up to an hour before your, your thing you're going to eat, that is great. That is great to do. Ideally, you're doing it before. Like right before, not when I say right before, I don't mean like five minutes before, although it could be. I just mean before, ideally before. So like there's been several times where um, either I knew I was going to be eating something just kind of a little carbier or um, I wasn't sure if I was going to someone's house um, or maybe a new restaurant or something. I will drink my, um, my sweetened up apple cider vinegar diluted um, on the way in the car. 
can totally do that. Yeah, and you can do different, you can make different flavors and put different things in there and stuff like that for sure because we're doing this up against a, a meal or food. We're doing it right before. We're not doing it strung out, okay? Um, ideally, ideally you're doing it before. So apple cider vinegar, um, any vinegar works that I don't think most of us are drinking white wine vinegar. <laughs> I can't imagine. So vinegar before if you can. Now I'm going to tell you right now, I sometimes forget and then I'm doing it after and that's still better than not doing it. Okay. There's a good, better and best. Best is right before. Uh, better enough right after. Good enough at some point in the day. It's still going to be helpful, but apple cider vinegar before. Having that veggie tizer. And I think it was Mama Debbie. Oh, bless me. I can't remember, but I think it was Mama Debbie asked me recently about the veggie tizer. How far ahead of time can you eat your veggie tizer? Especially if you're going out to eat or to someone's house. And I actually looked that up. Oh my goodness. Was it in this book? I believe it was in this book. I looked that up and she talks about it in here. Okay. She talks about it um, in this book that you can have your veggie tizer. Now, well, I'm going to tell you what she says and then I'm going to explain it. You can have your veg veggie tizer um, up to 90 minutes before your meal for it to still have that fiber mesh effect impact okay that is not ideal and she talks about that that's not ideal uh but you can if if that happens then don't fret it don't sweat it okay ideally you want to have it here comes the cat <sighs> ideally you want to have it uh right before and by right before i mean like you know 15 20 minutes before because we also want to keep in mind the idea we don't want to forget that while we do want to manage our blood glucose and our levels we also want to protect our insulin and our insulin release and remember every time we eat and every time we drink something that's flavored and all that stuff we are releasing insulin and we're wanting to manage that and and because it takes you know takes Time for insulin to clear out as well and so we want to be mindful of that but if you if you were concerned and thinking hmm I'm gonna go to these to this event and I am pretty sure they're not gonna have any real vegetables they're gonna have mashed potatoes and macaroni and cheese and rolls and cornbread and yes turkey or ham but no real vegetables. Then in that case, on the way, it, it, and it, it maybe like if you can take a vegetable side, that's even better. Like if you can show up with, you know, a big thing of green beans or a salad or whatever, that's even better. But, you know, not always can we do that. Not always can we do that. And so, you know, you'll know if you're, or if you're concerned or that's just not the setting because sometimes maybe it's a catered meal or sometimes it's not a it's not the right place for you to show up with a bag of food. Mm. Sometimes that's just not the right answer, okay? So in that case, on the way to the meal or the event, sure, take you a little baggie of whatever. Um, cucumber slices, pepper slices, whatever. Now, I want to point out to you, the vegetizer does not have to be raw, but if you're eating it in the car on the way, probably needs to be. <laughs> it just kind of makes more sense to me. Vegetizers don't have to be raw. They can be cooked. They can be fermented. Uh, that would be ideal, honestly, if you put a couple of fermented pickle slices in a baggie. That's a little messy, so I don't know about that. But, you know, just generally, a vegetizer is just some veggies, some non-starchy veggies that are cooked or raw or fermented or pickled, okay? It's your choice. doesn't matter. But taking a little baggie and maybe eating that on the way when you're concerned <laughs> and, and showing up with veggies isn't the right answer. But I'm going to tell you right now, this is my opinion, take it or leave it. If, you go, if you're going to show up at someone's house or, or whatever, if you're going to show up and you're going to have a little lunchbox with some veggies in it for yourself, please just bring a whole bunch for everybody. 
Please don't be that person. I said it. If you're, if you're gonna, if you're gonna just bring a veggie tray, veggie trays, that's not, that's not weird. People do those all the time. If you're gonna do that, then buy a veggie tray to share with everybody. Okay? Share. <laughs> share it. Drink your ACV on the way. Maybe have a veggie tizer on the way. But if, if possible, bring a veggie tray or bring some green beans or bring a salad. That's not weird. That's nice. <laughs> do that. Help everybody out. Okay? And don't make a big deal about it for goodness sakes. All right. So you got your vinegar. You got your veggie tizer. Those are ahead of time. Those are ahead of time. Okay? Now, the, the third thing here, at, you know, if, if you want, if you want to have some carbs of some sort, whatever kind they are, whether it's, whether it's cornbread or mashed potatoes, or maybe it's just simply sweet potatoes, or maybe it's, um, I don't know, brown rice or quinoa, whatever it is, okay, whatever it is. If you're going to choose to have some carbs, try to have them towards the end of your meal, towards the end. I didn't say you had to have them dead last because, you know, that's kind of getting into a lot of rules there. But try to have them towards the end after you've had your veggies or your side salad or whatever and you've had some protein and some fat. Try to have those, towards the, those carbs towards the end. That is going to help you have less of a glucose spike, which is what we want. Okay? Then, number four, let's say that you want a small slice of Aunt Margie Jo's chocolate cake. You want some dessert. Maybe it's, maybe it's cheesecake or whatever. And maybe it's not the healthy kind, the low carb, sugar free kind. Maybe it isn't. Regardless, either way. Let's say you want to have a little dessert. Now, this is my best tip, and I know it's hard sometimes because you might be a little full, but the best thing you can do is just go ahead and get it. Go ahead and get that slice or that piece of something sweet, whether it's sugar-free or not. Go ahead and get it and, and tack it on to the end of your meal. Go ahead and have it. That's going to help manage a blood glucose spike, for one thing, by not waiting an hour or two to have it, that's going to help manage your insulin better. You won't be uh, initiating another insulin uh, release. And also what I have found is that by having it at the end of the meal, like most people do around the world, that's what most people do, um, you, you probably won't eat quite as much, which is probably a good thing, especially if it's not a low carb, sugar free type of dessert. You'll have your little small slice. You'll have that enjoyment. You'll have the taste of it. You'll have the pleasure of it. You can tell Aunt Margie Jo that her cake was amazing as always. You can do all of those things. And, and you've had it at the end where it's much more manageable for you to be in control of how much. And it's more manageable with your blood sugar. Okay. And then the fifth thing to comp, the fifth way you can compensate this holiday season when you have these special meals or occasions. This one's, this fifth one is probably the hardest one. So it might not always work, but I'm going to give you a little tip. If you can move after the meal within, within an hour or so, okay, it doesn't have to be immediate, but if you can move after the meal, that would be ideal for helping bring those glucose level, glucose levels down, uh, more quickly. Not rapidly. It's not like, yep. it's not like that, but it'll just help bring them down. It's going to push the glucose into the muscles where they can receive it and get it out of your bloodstream, okay? Now, I know that doesn't always work. Believe me, I know that. It, 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 here too, it just, it doesn't always fly to do that. Um, yesterday, I had lunch out with a friend and I made good choices. It was, I made my best healthy choices and all that kind of thing, but it was with a friend I hadn't seen in months and guess what? We sat there and talked and had a coffee um, after our meal, and we sat there for probably two and a half hours. Okay, and then it was raining. I wanted to go for a walk after she left, but it was it was raining, and I was in, I was away from home, and it was a hot mess. So, anyway, sometimes that happens. But if you can move after the meal, if you can move after it, that's going to help you so much. And so, one thing we've started doing here a couple of years ago is we take a family walk after the Thanksgiving meal, which is you know. Our Thanksgiving meal is, is during the day, kind of, you know, 
it's kind of like a late lunch, early supper. And so we take a family walk. That, that doesn't always work. I know that. That's not always worked for us either. But if you can just kind of be like, hey, guys, I need to stretch my legs. Ooh, I ate so much. I need to go walk some of this off, even if you really didn't. Sometimes we say things like that to make everybody else feel better. Ooh, I ate so much. I need to go out for a walk. And in our neighborhood, that's what a lot of people do. And we all laugh about, you know, how much we ate and all that kind of stuff. And it's, it's kind of fun. Um, taking a walk would be perfect uh, for those occasions. Now, doesn't always work. Maybe you're at a, you know, Christmas business party, or maybe you're at an event, or maybe you're at somebody's house, okay? I get it. It doesn't always work. So you're going to sit there, you're going to sit there at the table, and you're going to talk and carry on conversation, and guess what I'm doing the whole time I'm talking to you right now? I'm doing calf raises. Did you know that? I'm doing calf raises as I talk to you in this video. You can do calf raises uh, with your legs under the table, and nobody has to know. Okay, you can even do them uh, individually. You don't have to do them together. That's what I'm doing right now. Can you tell? I'm doing calf raises, individual. That is going to push some glucose, okay? So that would be my tip for you if, if moving after the meal isn't going to be easy. Well, you can do that too, Cindy. You can, you can say, oh, excuse me, I need to go to the restroom. I'll be right back. Go to that bathroom and do some squats. Yes, do some squats. Because here's the thing, one of the things we talk about with moving after you eat is we talk about moving for 10 to 15 minutes, okay? Okay, Heather, I'm not going, <laughs> girl, I don't know about that one. <laughs> You're going to have to explain that one. Um, but we talk about moving for um, 10 to 15 minutes after we eat, and that is, that's ideal, okay? Yes, it's ideal, but... Five minutes is better than no minutes, okay? Five minutes is better than no minutes. And and honestly, an hour and a half after you eat, and that's the first chance you get for a walk, that's better than none. It really is. There, there's there's kind of like that bell curve or whatever. I mean, there's there's good, better, and best. And I think probably the best is to move for 10 to 15 minutes, you know, 20 to 30 minutes after you've eaten. That's ideal, but that doesn't always work. So they're still good and better. And so if you go to the restroom and after the meal and you do some some air squats or even calf raises there or depending on the, the depending on the setting, some wall push-ups, you know, you can do that for 5 minutes and push a lot of glucose. And that really moving those big muscles like that is going to push glucose more than even just the walk. You you can do less time than if you're going for a walk, okay? So just keep that in mind. So compensation, apple cider vinegar before, vegetizer of some sort before, either on the way or when you get there, if you bring it to share, having your carbs towards the end of your meal, whatever carbs they are, whether they're considered healthy or not so much, having your dessert tacked on to your meal, not an hour or two later and then moving after. Um, those are all things that are going to help tremendously. And then I'm telling you what, I'm telling you what, I share a lot of books with y'all. I know. I just, there's so many great books out there that have so many good things to consider, so many good tools to really reflect upon. On your Christmas list, if you don't have this book, okay, if you don't have this one, I recommend this for your Christmas list, okay? This this Glucose Goddess Method, this, she shares all 10 of her tips for managing your, your glucose better and better and better. She shares all 10 of them. She digs into four more deeply and specifically, and then there's some recipes in here. And overall, I mean, really, truly, overall, the recipes in this book are very healthy. Well, I mean, they're all healthy, but they're like pristinely very healthy, but they're also simple. Like, like not a lot of ingredients, not complicated at all. And um, I've made several from this or used them as inspiration. So highly recommend. Um, she does have another book that came out several years ago called The Glucose Revolution. And that book is great too. It's just more of the typical 
um, digging into all this, the research and data and science. And, you know, like in that book, in the Glucose Revolution, she talks about why apple cider vinegar and what it does and how it works um, to do all of this. So she just goes deeper in that one. But I love this book. It is a beautiful book, beautiful book. And it really gives you what you need to know to um, get started with managing your your choices better and your glucose better. Now, th this is not an exhaustive everything you need to know. This you know about everything you need to do to eat uh, healthy and things, but it really does do a great job of going over these tools and these tips for managing um, your your blood glucose, but managing when you're going to be eating away from home, especially, or when you've decided, you know, I'm going to have Aunt Margie Jo's chocolate cake, and I don't want it to, you know, I want to mitigate that and compensate for that. So, this holiday season, you you have so much control. Take control. Start from that place of taking control and having that confidence that you can do it. Consider all the different uh, settings that you're going to be in and kind of get Kind of get your head on, get a big picture view of the holiday season and what that's going to look like. Commit to those healthy choices, um, which is going to be 80 to 90% of the time is when you're just eating at home, like you always are. Commit to healthy best choices during those times, for sure. And then use those five little tools, those, those things I just told you about, to compensate Um and it could be that you're compensating. Maybe you're like, oh, no, I'm not going to eat anything with sugar. I'm not going to eat anything unhealthy. But maybe you're just like, but I know I'm going to eat. I'm going I'm to over. I'm probably going to overeat a little bit. Or maybe I'm just going to eat a little bit more carby than my body can handle. You can still use those five things to help you uh, manage your blood glucose. Um, quiet the food noise a bit, even with the, the healthy choices. It can help you so much. Okay. So. That's what I'm saying, Lisa. They just bring a veggie platter, and then you got yourself and some other people covered. And that's not weird, and it's easy. And you can make uh, you can make some beautiful. You can either buy one, or you can make some beautiful veggie platters. And it's just a really easy. <laughs> it's an easy win for you and anyone else. And um, that's just so easy. So yeah, me too. That's kind of going to be my go-to from now on. Is just. I'm just going to sign up for the veggie platter for sure, uh, definitely, okay? So I hope that was helpful, and I hope you all have a great Thanksgiving week. Again, we'll start our Advent Challenge on December 1st, and I'll have some posts before that. Um, if you haven't done it before, it's super easy, super fun, but I'll have some posts explaining that, and then I will go... Um, I'm pretty sure I'll go live next time on Monday, December 2nd, probably, so that we can talk about our challenge and get really set up. It's going to be a 12-day Advent challenge, December 1st through the 12th. So invite your friends in, for sure, your mama friends. This is a mama's only group. Uh, invite your mama friends in so they can get started with us. And... Um, Two, some of y'all, some of y'all are kind of newer to the group here. I want you to know a couple of things before I let you go. Um, there's a lot of free teaching. There is a lot of free teaching here in this group, and and some of it's in the guides. If you haven't looked at the guide section, some of it's there. Some of it is in the pinned featured post. And I want you to know that over the next couple of weeks, the pinned feature pro posts are going to get cleaned up. And organized because I've gotten behind because it's been busy with the Foxy Foundation group, okay? But, um, and we'll have it all organized and we'll probably have like a, well, I'm not going to say that part, but we'll have probably a food piece guide and things like that. But it's all there as well as a lot of the videos that are teachy are on my YouTube channel too, eventually. So um, there's a lot of free teaching here and then I think it's guide number two. There are some freebies that you can get through your email if you want some freebies from from me to you. So check those those things out because there's a lot of stuff here to help you um, in your journey for sure. So, all right, ladies, I hope y'all have a great rest of your week, but also holiday next week. 
Um, keep your keep your head on. You can do it. You can do it. Just remember those five C's and then those five tips when we talk about compensating. All right. All right. Bye bye, ladies.